In this tutorial, we will be making a tic-tac-toe game in vanilla JavaScript. The game will function like any other tic-tac-toe game, except for not having circles and crosses with different colors for each player. We will be looking at how to determine a winner for all the winning scenarios, and how to stop the game and restart the game when it's finished. We will also create a counter to keep track of number of wins it won't be that much styling and mainly focused on the JavaScript part, although we will make the app responsive. Uh, and the code is uh, available in the description uh, with a GitHub link. So here we see some basic functionality where we win and we see the counter go up and we can restart with the game over text. Yeah, let's begin. Okay, let's begin by making our HTML document. So now we will just do the boilerplate code with the HTML uh, shortcut here. Hopefully you got it as well, but if you don't, this is not that code. HTML, this, yeah. So this is the boilerplate code that we want. And starts with uh, this tag doc type html and then html tags uh, wrapping the body here and the head so pretty standard stuff now uh, we can just change this from document to just tic tac so game because that's what we're about to make and yeah, so I'll, I've uh, just created the index.html uh, file, uh, our JavaScript file, and our CSS file. So they were uh, empty uh, from the get go, so I'm just starting on this HTML file. So yeah, let's continue by just making uh, the contents of our body and the contents of our page by creating our first element, which will be an div, which holds a class of wrapper. So this will wrap our entire app. Uh, and uh, our app will consist of different sections. So the first section would be our, uh, actually our game container which uh, will hold our squares for our tic-tac-toe board. So here we will have three rows uh, making up a cube, three uh, times three. So we need to make nine squares. And I like to make a uh, uh, containing uh, div tag around each row so I have a little more uh, flexibility uh, when it comes to styling so let's just make the square row like so and then inside here we want each individual square so we will just call this square and give it an ID of square dash zero, just to keep track of which one is which. And now we want two more of these. So I'm just pressing, holding in alt and then shift and pressing down on the uh, line I want to duplicate. So now we have three identical lines, but we would need to change the ID because you can't have identical IDs. So this will be one, and this will be two. And now we have our first row. Uh, this won't show up in our browser because we don't actually have, it doesn't have any content. 
maybe we can see something here no nothing yet so let's continue making our second row which will be basically identical to uh, the one above square row and then I'll just copy this because I'm lazy and the next index is three four five save the format and now we have our second row and then I'll just copy this again like so format and save you can actually fix format on save if you go to preferences settings format here and you have format on save the writing is a little tiny i suppose but uh, if you can see it says format the file on save and here is the default formatter for me it's prettier so yeah let's just continue here now uh, so we need to change the ID here, six, seven, eight. So now we have our squares. So this will be our game container. So it will wrap all our squares. So let's just make the rest up so we don't need to go back and forth so much next is our I'll, i call it i'll call it info container because it will have the info about our game that includes a counter for how many times each uh, player has one. Great ID for Elementar here. Game counter. And a class. Game counter container. Like so. And then a little bit of this row thing again. A wrapping div, not like that. Like so. Class of counter row. And then just say inside here player one. And then underneath we'll say id of player one counter like so so now we have the row for our uh, first player and we'll just uh, make one for our second one as well so we need another uh, row we can just duplicate this just change this to two and change player one to player two like so now we have uh the counter information up and running uh or at least in the blueprint of it now let's make the last part of our html document which will be our reset part our reset button we start container following the pattern and inside here we'll have a button which says restart and an id of restart we'll also have h2 within this that just says inside an id game status this will say game over when the game is in fact over so 
this is uh, the first part of our uh, HTML. So uh, next we'll just hook this up to CSS and JavaScript. So let's continue by uh, connecting our HTML to our CSS so we can actually see something on the page. Let's create a link element in the head. And this will point to our style sheet. And this is located in the same folder as our HTML. So we can just say dot slash for the same directory. And then we will choose app.css like this. And then we want to make our squares visible. So we need to uh, attach some styling to game container and square and square row. And we'll add, attach some styling to the HTML and body uh, tag as well. So let's do this now. Let's say body HTML. Like so, background color, and I have a specific color in mind here. Like so, kind of a grayish color. And then font family, setting the font. And I usually use this because it's uh, pretty nice to look at. It's pretty neutral. And then just the uh, alt stuff. Like so. Let's move on to the game container, which will be a flex element. Display flex. And let's say set the flex direction column because we want everything on top of each other because this is the container holding each row so we want each row to be on top of the next and then because we set flex direction column we have to say align items to align them horizontally and we'll say center, put it at the center of the page. Now let's say square row. And here we also want display flex. And let's just finish up here with square. So we can see it on the page. Border one pixel solid black with two hundred pixels right two hundred pixels and a background color of a e. a lime lime color you can say cursor just for appearances pointer like so and now we should hopefully see something here yeah. so these are our squares and next we will make some logic happen so we can actually play the game and the game will be like uh, two players playing, so no AI, just two player game uh, locally. So first my turn and then somebody else sitting beside me uh, is the next uh, person out.
So let's tackle that next. Yes, so let's continue by making, start making our JavaScript by typing out the variables we're going to use. So firstly, we will need a constant called squares, which represents all our squares. And we will go to the document and get element by class name here. And we call this square. Just to double check. Yeah. So all the classes here are square. So we can just console log this. To be sure that we have the correct one. And nothing. Let's see here. We have get element by class name squares. And yeah, yeah, of course, we haven't connected our JavaScript actually, so we need to do that first. So to connect our JavaScript, we will just insert a script tag in the bottom most part of our body. Script, script, like so, with source property. And that will be in the same directory, so dot slash dot js, like so. So now this should hopefully work. Let's take a look. And yeah, we're getting squares. And it's an, it's an HTML collection. So we need to note that. And here, here we have the different type, the different divs with their ID and class. So this looks promising. Now we will continue on our JavaScript part. So we will just continue making our variables just to make it uh, a little easier to see later on when we start using them. Then we have everything uh, ready to be used. So this will have game complete message. This will be the status of our game. Get element by ID. And this is the game status ID. So uh, actually the part that says game over. But we want to display that uh, depending on the game status. Then our restart uh, variable get element ID and restart. So this will be our button that we're gonna click when we want to restart the game. Next is the player one counter text so this will just display what the value uh, is currently um, the value uh, will increment by one for each time the player wins so we will have a, a sum of uh, how many games is one player one counter and we'll just duplicate this, Alt, Shift, Down. And just change this to Player 2. And Player 2. Like so. Now, let's just put this underneath, just to have some uh, clean space. And we need some variables for determining what 
uh, whose turn it is. So let's say player one turn will begin as true. So player one starts, and it will be a let because we're we're uh, planning on changing uh, that value. I'll make one for player two as well. Player two turn, and it will start as false because one needs to begin. And then we will make a variable to hold the state of our game. So this will be an array holding nine objects. One object represents one square. We'll just call this square matrix. Why not, right? Full name, like so, an array object this will uh, include an index and a user and it will be initialized as null so basically no value like so and we will duplicate this nine times so we have one there one two three four five six seven eight nine that should be fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Okay, and we'll fix the indexes. So it goes from zero to eight, like so. So this uh, array represents the status of our game going through the process of playing the game. So uh, for example, when player one uh, clicks on tile zero, it will say player one here in a string, uh, representing a player one um, uh, by changing the color, uh, which would be will be pink in this case, because we have the most uh, fantastic colors here. So pink and uh, azure, azure, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. So just to, it doesn't matter really, you can have whichever color you like, but this was what I, for some reason, chose. So I'm just going to stick with it. And now that we have our matrix, let's make the next variable our game complete variable, variable which will start as false. And this will be true when the game is in fact complete. So it needs to be a let because we're planning on changing it. And our player one counter. This will be initialized to zero and also changed throughout. Same with player two counter also zero because everything starts as zero. Now this is the first set of variables we'll be working with. We'll be making some local variables as well, but this is what we will begin with. Okay, so let's begin by adding the functionality for actually being able to click a square and change its color. So, be a, so to be able to do this, we need to access our newly created variable squares and add a uh, click event to uh, that variable so we'll add an event listener in other words uh, to, able, to be able to uh, attach this to the squares variable we need to uh, actually make a little manipulation here or um, change not change but uh, uh, acknowledged acknowledge that the, the types are a little different because this is not just an array it's an html collection so we need to respect this so we'll say array from and then squares if you just try to type squares dot for each that will not work 
So you need to actually do this to make it work. There are other methods as well, but this is what I uh, ended up using. So yeah. So here we can say for each, and you see it's available as well. If it, if the type didn't match up, this this for each method wouldn't be available here in the, the list. So for each, and here we'll um, put some arguments into our callback function, which will be the square, individual square, and its index. Then the arrow and our brackets. And here we will attach our event listener. So square each individual square add event listener of type click so when we click a tile we want something to happen and then the anonymous callback function like so so let's just console log to see that something was actually clicked. Refresh and we click and it got clicked. And you see that happens for every tile, uh, every square I'm clicking. So it happened, happened nine times here. You see that number increments. So it's uh, registering as well. So now that we have our click uh, uh, handler up and running, let's make it so that we can change the color and change turns. So first, player one is uh, choosing its uh, square and then handing the turn over to player two. So I'll just say a comment here just to make it tidy. If player one turn, which is initialized to true, so this will be true going uh, going in here. We can just say say it like this. You don't actually need to say equals equals true or triple equals because this is basically the same thing. This tests if it's true, but we'll just say equals equals true for readability. And then we'll say, now we have access to each individual square. So we'll say square. And here we'll change the style by saying background color pink like so and we need to change something else as well because we made this square matrix to keep track of who owns which square so we'll update this here and say square matrix uh, at index of the correct index so the indexes of this array matches up with 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 the correct square we're clicking so when we're clicking the second square which is index one it will actually change the style or uh, rather update the user for index one we'll say dot user equals and this will be player one. So for each tile that is uh, clicked on the player one's turn will be uh, colored pink. And for this array, the user property will be set to player one. 
So let's see if that actually works. We can console log here. Square matrix. And then we'll just console log this out. Let's see if the color changes. Yeah, it gets pink and index number six is now user player one and the index should be correct zero one two three four five six so that's correct let's make the uh, opposite or the same thing for player two say else if player two Turn. which is initialized to false equals equals true in that case do basically the same thing just don't change it to pink but change it to something else which I have chosen to be Azure color, which is kind of a white grayish color. And we need to update our square matrix at correct index, setting the property user to player two this time. So but now we need to change the turns because player one will forever be true in this case and we'll never get into player two uh, player two's turn so just make a note here change turns we'll say player one turn equals the opposite of player one turn this can be a little confusing if you're seeing it for the first time but it actually just saying that set player one turn to be the opposite of what it is so in this way we can alternate between two values so if the player one turn is true which is uh, it which it's uh, init initialized to will set it to the opposite which is false let's do the same thing for player 2 turn player 2 turn like so let's see what happens now we refresh we click this is still correct let's click again and we get a different color the azure color and then we have player one still at index six and now we have player two at index seven so this seems to be correct now let's attach a little bit of code to prevent a little bug from happening let's check it out if we do something like this and we click again we can actually change uh, the color so we can change an already chosen tile this is not what we want we want the tile the square that you chose to be permanent so not changeable let's just uh, add uh, a little piece of uh, code here to prevent this so we'll get this over here We'll say if in the case of player one, if square get attribute, check for the attribute on this uh, this element. Check for the style attribute. Check if it's equal to background color. 
colon azure semicolon. This is important. Remember this one. This basically just checks if the attribute style has this particular style on itself. And if it does, <clears throat> then we will just return because we don't want it want it to change. So we'll have an equal but opposite kind of if statement here, checking for uh, the the pink uh, styled uh, squares. Get attribute style equals equals background color pink. Like so. And semicolon. We'll just return. Let's see what that does. Then we refresh, we click, we click again, and we're clicking, but nothing happens. So this is more like what we want. We don't want it to be changeable. Okay, now let's start by making the the logic for winning the game so how do you win this game you win by either uh, getting three in a row uh, horizontally or vertically or diagonally so like this is a win for pink and this is a win for white and you get the point the diagonals and yeah uh, so we need to make that logic and to make this we will make a couple of new variables let's just make a pink array which will be an empty array we will attach uh, content to that array shortly and we will compare it to the winning array Azure array same thing now here we will put our winning combos so this is all the scenarios where um, where uh, where you actually win if you get this uh, combination you will win so the first row horizontally is a win that is one zero one two zero one two which basically is this row that is a winning combination and then the second row, same thing, just uh, one step down, which is three, four, five. And then the third row, last one, which is six, seven, eight. Like so. This is the first row, or the row, row part of uh, the winning combos. And then we'll get to the columns. First column. That is zero, three, six. Because this is zero, and this is uh, three, and this is six. So that combination. Then the second. Column. That is one, four, seven. The middle one, and then the third column, which is 
two, five, eight. And then lastly, we need the diagonals. Diagonals. Is that a word? I think so. Uh, let's say diagonally. Yeah. yeah. Whatever the word is. Diagonal. No. Um, left. So the top da top one is left. So starting from here and down. That is zero four eight. Const diagonal down right. So the opposite, which is this down there. That is two, four, and six. So, so now we have all the winning combos. If you get any of these, you win the game. Okay, so now we will take the arrays we created here, the pink array and the azure array, and we will actually compare them to these guys. But first we need to populate or uh, put something in here first. So let's do that. We will go into our square in the square matrix I mean uh, array we'll say for each so we'll loop through it and in here we have square each individual square and in each individual square we will check for square dot user if that is player one. And if it is, if the for if this square, uh, squares uh, user property says player one, then we want to push it to the pink array. So we're putting it into the pink array, in other words. And this will be just the index, not the entire square, but just the number. And then we will be able to compare it with these numbers. And we will have a case for player two as well. Equals equals player two. And in the case it's player two, say azure array dot push square dot index like that now we have this let's just console log um square matrix uh no actually we will Incorrect. This is what we want to take a look at. And one for the Azure array as well. Let's see if that gives us any useful information. Now we are seeing the combinations there or the array getting filled. So the pink array is now two, four, six, two, no, I mean two, four, six. So now we have the diagonal and that would correspond to this. So this will win if we compare this to the pink array. And that we're gonna do right now so how we do this is making if statements but very chunky ones so we have to check for a lot of stuff so let's just make the if like this inside here we're gonna check for every scenario 
with uh, the pink array. Uh, first the pink array, which corresponds to player 1, and then player 2 with the zero. So first we will check for uh, the first row uh, compared to uh, the pink array, and then the second row, and then the third row, and then the first column, and so on and so on. So the way we do this is we need to check for every combination in uh, in the array. Meaning that, let's just type it out first. First row dot, and we'll use a function called every determines whether all the members of an array satisfy the specified test. This is what we want right now. And then we have the current value for that array. So the first one being the first row is 0 and then 1 and then 2. And we'll compare it to pink array. And we'll check if that includes includes meaning if it's inside of it the current so just let's just go over this one more time we'll take we're taking the first row which is this zero one two and we're checking for every by which is taking first the current one at a time and we're checking first for zero and comparing it to pink array does pink array include the current which is zero for the first iteration and if we win that way it should so for the first iter for every iter iteration it should match up exactly so the first one should be zero, the second one should be one, and the third one should be two. And if it doesn't, this isn't true. So that's how it for it works. And includes just checks if this this current uh, iteration is part of the pink array. So this way we check if it uh, matches exactly. Let's continue by just adding uh, the different combinations. This, this will look uh, extremely, uh, extremely similar. Uh, basically, the same thing all over again. Current, like so. So, just to uh, drive the point home here. We're taking now the second row, three, four, five. We're doing dot every on it, which iterates over this uh, this uh, array, uh, trying to determine whether all the members of the array satisfy the specified tests, as we said. So the current one being the first three. Checking if it's included in the pink array. If it is, check for the other, the second one, which is, which is four. Is it included? It should be. And then the third iteration, five. Is it included in the pink array? If it is, then this is true. And we win through by uh, selecting uh, all the colors for the second row. So I think I'm just going to copy uh, because I don't need to write out every single one. I think that will be just tiresome to watch. So let's just put it in the different uh, variables that we need to compare for here. So this is all the rows. Now we need all the columns. First column. Second column. Third column. We're missing one here. And 
diagonally from left diagonally from right like this so this is all the scenarios where we win as player one let's just put in the console log here and say pink is the winner like so let's see if that makes any sense fresh got okay 89 yeah we're missing something here yeah because this shouldn't be commas this should be or uh, these pipe symbols because we want to check if any of these are true uh, any can be true so we need or operators which is this two of these pipe symbols so if you save, this should look better. Let's see. Up row. Pink is the winner. Let's try another combination. Pink is the winner. Pink is the winner. So this uh, seems to work okay. Now let's make the exact same thing for uh, for player two as well and this is just exactly the same thing you can just copy this actually but now instead of comparing it with the pink array we need to compare it with the assert array instead so i'll just copy in here so just to uh, go over this one more time, we're checking on the first row. We're doing a callback function here to check for every element of this array. Does the current value in the first row element, is it included in the assert array? If it is, let's go to the next one. Is that included in the assert array? If it is, let's go to the next one. If it's included in the array, then we just won here. And we're checking for every combination possible. Let's console log this as well. It's the winner. Like so. Let's try and win as a server now. And Azor is the winner. And nothing from pink. That looks good. Azure is the winner. Let's try. Diagonally. Azure is the winner. So this looks good. Looks uh, good. Let's add some things here now so we can actually see that the game has uh, ended and uh, someone has won. And we can. We can uh, see that uh, it's time to start a new game. So in our uh, if statement here, if we have one as player one, let's do uh, let's just check the variables we made up here, just to uh, repeat uh, for a second. We have a game complete variable which we now want to change we want to set this to true and we want to uh, give a point to the winner which is either player one or player two so in this case here we want to give a point to player one so we'll say player one counter plus plus this is exactly the same as saying playing one counter player one counter equals player one counter plus one like so this is the same thing you can also say 
like this, I suppose. I'm pretty sure this is the same thing, but now that I'm thinking about it, um, I'm kind of uh, uh, stuck in my stuck in my own head here. But uh, let's just move on. This is uh, good enough. This will give a point to pink when we win. So, and we also need to say game complete equals true. So we know that the game is over. And here, let's just say player two counter plus plus. Give a point to the player two when he wins or she wins. Game complete equals true as well, like so. So now we need an if statement to check if the game is complete because now we're just saying game is complete. So what doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't do anything. So we need to actually do something about it. So let's say game complete equals equals true. Or we can just let it uh, say game complete. This is the same thing. Check if it's true just uh, to get get used to seeing it like that as well. Now, here we'll change some HTML as well, because we need to see on the page that we actually want, and then we need to change some inner HTML. The variables we are going to change here are the player uh, one and two counter text, and game complete message because here we want to say game over and here we want to update the counter so here game complete message dot inner h inner html equals game over next is the player one counter dot inner html equals equals player one counter this variable right here so in instead of setting it to just some static text we're actually putting in a variable there and we'll do the same thing for player two counter. So inner HTML equals player two counter. Like so. And then we'll say game complete. Set it back to false again. Because uh, now we need to now that we have gone through this we need to set it back and for this to function correctly we need to actually uh, re reinitialize i could say just set our square matrix back to its original values not with let we're not declaring it we're just changing it again like so now let's see what we get on the page when we actually win pink is the winner did i refresh nothing yet so i realized i've made two errors here three errors actually I've uh, missed the uh, text here because I wrote just player one counter and not player one counter text and equally for uh, player two counter text. So that was uh, the first and second error. And then I missed game complete was misspelled. 
So that was why I didn't get the correct functionality when I won as the pink player or player one. So now everything should work fine. So now we get the game over when we win. And uh, yeah, you can still play, but doesn't really make, make any sense. And I get the game over for every scenario here, I would assume. And as uh, a sir as well. And now we want to uh, make the functionality for this restart button because right now we need to uh, actually refresh the page for each uh, playthrough, which is a little bit inconvenient because then our counter gets restarted every time. And we want to actually keep track of who won uh, the most. So let's get into that now. So to create our restart functionality, we'll attach this to the restart button. And to utilize the button, we need to create an event listener uh, for click events. So we'll attach this to the restart variable, which we created uh, up here. So we're getting the uh, correct element from the HTML. I will say restart dot add event listener of type click and callback function like so. Let's just check that uh, restart is clicked. Go to the page, click restart, restart clicked, clicked restart, I mean. So this works correctly. So now we need to again loop through our squares, just like this. So we will say array from squares, which is all the squares for each for each square you could say we need to index as well which is the second argument when you put it in when you put in the arguments like this and the arrow like so and what we need to do is put the color back to how it was and restart or reinitialize our square matrix. So let's say square dot style equals background color and then our initial background color which is this I believe. like so and then still inside our uh, event listener or our click event function we will uh, reinitialize our square matrix like so. let's see how that works Re refresh to get the latest changes and we win here let's try restarting our tiles are back to normal let's try and win as sir and it gets updated this looks good so far it's updated again restart Did it update? I didn't notice. Two two. I need to remember the numbers. Two two. 
updates. It might not have up been updated uh, that one time. Or three. It does seem to work quite okay. But uh, the game over text uh, needs to be gone when we restart as well. Okay, so the text actually needs to be changed here in the restart event listener. So you just say over our new uh, our square index, we can say game complete message equals empty string. Not that exactly, but the inner HTML should be an empty string, like so. Let's see if that fixes things. Refresh. Get game over and a point and restart and the game over is gone. So this uh, works fine. Let's see if it works for Azure as well. Restart and yeah, that should work fine. So now we have the basic functionality of our game up and running. So there's uh, a little bug here actually. Uh, but it's not uh, something you'll uh, bump into unless you actually want it to happen but let's just uh, show it uh, so you're aware of it so if i win the game here i get a point we see our square index uh, is this should be the same thing as the board but now I can actually continue playing uh, even though it's game over. So I can still get points here. So let's say I put one at index 6. Now we have a new board. And you can see you can play with the new board without it actually being the new board. So this doesn't reflect the change. So this... Uh, I thought about putting it in, but I didn't find any good solution uh, right on the top of my head. So, and considering that this is a functionality that's uh, uh, good to have for when the game is finished and isn't uh, like a game breaking bug at all, I thought it was just as well to just let it be there. But if you can, uh, if you can solve it, feel free to uh, put some comments in the video or something. It would be nice to see uh, someone uh, fixing fixing that bug. So, uh, for uh, our purposes, we'll uh, consider the app uh, functionality uh, done now. So. Next up is uh, styling our app, so it looks a uh, little more, uh, uh, not exactly better, but uh, we'll fi fix uh, the responsive design and make this uh, centered on screen and look a little, look a little more presentable at least. So yeah, okay. Now I have actually fixed the bug in some way you could say. Uh, by uh, attaching some styles to the game container element so this game container wraps the entire entirety of our squares so i was thinking if i could just add a style to this container making it impossible to click any of these elements that would be fine then you can't play any longer so you have to click the restart button and then the bug won't happen anymore. So in our JavaScript, I initialize or I say on each restart, we put the pointer events to auto, which is uh, the normal kind, I suppose. So we can click elements, setting the attribute on this 
game contra container element which i created here i just attached an, a game id to the game uh, container element as you can see here so every time we click restart we set it back to normal and we go all the way down here here we set on the game complete uh, if clause we set the attribute style pointer events none which makes it impossible to click so now we refresh and we win we get points but we can't click anymore now this is uh, totally unplayable so only chance we have to continue is by clicking restart so now the the bug won't happen anymore because it's impossible to play anymore but you still get points so that's what uh that's kind of a, of a kind of a solution i guess let's move on okay so uh, let's just delete this because this isn't needed anymore because um the square matrix is uh, uh, reinitialized in the restart part here. So yeah, now our app is basically done. Uh, we can say it's done functional uh, functionality wise. So there's no more functionality we need to attach. So now we can just concentrate on the styling of the uh, of the app so let's do that now in our app.css document in our style sheet rather we have some uh, some styles uh, here already but we are missing some let's uh, apply those as well just to refresh our memory here we have an info container which uh, holds uh, the counter and our uh, reset uh, button i suppose no not our reset button does it no because that goes there so reset is another section so we can just take the info container part first then we'll take the restart section and the button styles and finally we'll do a media query to make it responsive on mobile devices yeah so let's begin by attaching some styles to our info container info container brackets and the dot uh, or because it's a class and we'll say display flex and never have enough uh, flex uh, containers let's make it a column flex direction column because we want everything to stack on top of each other in this container let's align it to the center horizontally like so let's just take a look and see how that looks so yeah this is the section and this is another section that's because that's why this hasn't moved yet so we'll take that in time now the info container is good let's uh, take a look we have a game counter container and counter row player one counter player two counter so that's our styles let's take this game counter container better for the mouthful no surprise display flex flex direction column as well because we want these two let's see game counter 
we want these uh, these guys to stack on top of each other as well. So, and then the counter row. Display flex. And just make it font size. Make the font a little bigger. 32 pixels. We're not setting the direction here because the default direction is row. Let's take a look. A little bigger. So it's a bit more visible. So yeah, getting the numbers right. That's the row. So now we basically are done with this part of the page. Now let's do one for this guy as well, the game over text. Let's just style that as well and then take the button. So this is the game status status, which is a, which is an ID. And then we need to use the number number symbol there instead of a dot. And this will just say text align to make it center. And then oh, so just make the uh, text a little bigger, 36 pixels, like so. So now we have a little bigger text and it's centered on the page. Now let's take the button. This is the last last style. We can just attach it to the button. This uh, with no identifier on uh, before before the tag name means means this will be attached to all buttons. So this might take a little while because it's a lot of styles. So we'll just do a background color of a specific value here. 60 like kind of a orange tomato kind of thing order color kind of gray adding make it a little bigger 32 text align so the text inside the button gets centered and text decoration none so no borders like on the text um or weight the width or thickness of uh, the text Display inline block, single inline box. So, yeah, font size sixteen pixels. You can just play around with these uh, values and see what uh, what you like. Doesn't have to be this uh, style. This is uh, just something I found on the internet, and uh, there's a bunch more you can check out. Really cool stuff. I'll make it a pointer cursor with 200 pixels, and just give it a border radius of 3 pixels, just not to get those sharp edges. And we'll just put on a hover style which i like to add to it to you you feel like it's a little bit uh, a little more alive when you hover it over it and it changes color i like that so let's let's just say corn silk because that's a nice word and then color like, like so let's take a look at that yeah, so now our button looks 
much better. But we actually need to put in uh, the center as well and to do that we need to attach it to the correct one restart container let's just see here yeah we just put it here display flex and uh, justify content because we want it horizontally when it's flex direction uh, row justify content aligns uh, items horizontally center hopefully this works so now we have everything in the center. We can play like this. Oh, that was a big button. Not totally what we wanted. Well, let's fix that now. So the problem with the giant button suddenly being becoming giant was actually because of these div tags. And we hadn't included this section into the info container, which was the correct way of doing it. So with that, I could just delete the the restart container class here. It wasn't needed at all. We don't need a an, uh, an, uh, specific style for that button uh, position-wise. So with this, it's uh, it's centered on the page and it doesn't uh, uh, resize or get big, suddenly get bigger uh, when we win the game. So this is basically everything we need uh, appearance uh, with the appearance. So let's uh, uh, close up here with just making it responsive as well. So at the end of our document, let's attach media for media query. Let's say max width 768 pixels. This is kind of, uh, should I say, I've seen this number before, but it not, it's not like written in stone, I suppose. There's some devices that uses this breakpoint. Uh, this is spelled wrong. Media, like so. So that's because that's why this number maybe appears to be oddly specific. But uh, just just play around with it. And inside here, we will change that square style for when the width of our screen is not wider than this so on screens uh, uh, less than this we will uh, implement this style this style will fire and that is basically just making everything smaller so width and height 100 pixels smaller like this let's take a look Let's shrink the screen and there we have a smaller grid. So just one breakpoint, but seems to work fine. If we were to put it on a mobile device, it would look like this kind of. Yeah, we can play around with this. iPhone X would look like this. And we can play like that. And uh, like that. So, yeah, I hope uh, this was a fun learning experience for you and you enjoyed making this app. Uh, if you want to see more and you liked working, uh, doing this uh, kind of uh, apps,
please uh, consider liking and subscribing uh, because that's uh, a real motivator for me to make uh, more videos in the future. See you in the next one.